beautiful line I read not long ago said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Which means to have a vision, and even though the vision is in the air or the sky, then build a foundation under your dreams. And when you see men and women who rise from poverty and obscurity to fame and renown, you invariably see someone who had a vision of what they could be and have and do that was far beyond what they were. Every one of us has had an experience. At one time, when we were small, we had a vision of being grown up and having our own cars. And as we grew older, we had a vision of having our own homes and our own families. And as we grew older, we had a vision of traveling and going to Europe. We fulfill all our visions. The wonderful thing is this, is that we always tend to achieve our goals. The problem is that our goals are set so low that even when we do achieve them, they don't turn us on. They don't fill us with enthusiasm. So dream big dreams, if you like, and focus on results not activities. This is the key. Be clear about the results that you're trying to accomplish. This is one of the keys of peak performance, by the way. All peak performers are result-oriented. All losers or underachievers tend to be activity-oriented. And in activity orientation, what they do is they work very, very hard. Sometimes they work frantically. Sometimes they work longer hours than you do, but they lose sight of the results. Ben Trigo, the strategic thinker, said, the very worst thing in the world is to do very efficiently what need not be done at all. And many of us work very, very hard to do very efficiently what need not be done at all. And anybody who's ever had employees will tell you that you, every single day you come across your employees doing something very diligently, but it's completely irrelevant to the success of the business. So focus on results. Here's a key question to ask yourself in your working life. I think it's one of the most important key questions. I'll give you two. Number one is, what results are expected of me? What results are expected of me? Not what activities, but what results or what outputs, what am I supposed to produce in my job? A second question you can ask yourself is, why am I on the payroll? Why am I on the payroll? What results are expected? The results that are expected of us in selling are sales. And the only time that we are working is when we are doing something that contributes directly to that result. Isn't that true? But of course, why do we do the other things? I've come to the conviction that the reason why we do the other things is because they are fun and easy rather than hard and necessary. I think the major reason why people fail in life, if I can pass this on, which wasn't part of this, but major reason why people fail in life is because of the expediency factor that we always do and we always take the fastest and easiest route to get the things that we want. But the fastest and easiest route in life is almost always the route to failure. It's short-term gain for long-term pain. We do what is fun and easy today instead of what is hard and necessary, and then we have to do what is hard and necessary at the end of our life when it's too late. And you'll find that the willingness and the ability to discipline yourself, to be clear about what it is you want, to be clear where you're going, to be clear about the results that you're expected to accomplish, and then to only work on those results. The ability to discipline yourself to do that is absolutely critical for success. It is not possible to conceive of a person being successful who is not capable of disciplining themselves to do what is hard and what is necessary rather than what is fun and easy. And when, especially when it comes to managing your time, when it comes to looking at what you should do on a day-to-day -day basis, focus on results, not activities. Now let me give you a method which has helped me write out your goals. All goals have to be in writing, by the way. If you don't have your goals in writing, uh, then they're not really goals at all. They're merely wishes. And as they say, a wish is merely a goal without any energy behind it. Have your goals in writing. Write them out very specifically and clearly, and then do this. Every single morning, rewrite your major goals in the first person singular as though they already existed. Rewrite your major goals every single morning. Now, this should take you about two to four minutes, maybe five. You can do it all in a paragraph. If, for instance, if your goal is to earn $50,000 a year, every single morning, write, I earn $50,000 a year. If your goal is to be excellent in real estate, say, I am an excellent salesperson in my field. If your goal is to weigh a certain number of pounds, if your goal is to enjoy a certain kind of life, Write down your major goals in the first person singular as though they already existed today every single morning. And then every single evening, take about five, 10 minutes instead of watching television, just before you turn on the television, say, wait a second, I've got to review my progress. And sit down and review what you've done in the course of the day and say, what have I done right today? What have I done right that's moved me toward my goals? And second question is, what would I do differently if I had today to do over again? Those, those four steps, by the way, writing and rewriting your goal each morning, reviewing them in the evening, and asking yourself those two questions. What did I do right? What did I do that moved me toward my goals today? And what would I do differently if I had the day to live over? If you'll ask yourself those two questions, in the next 30 days, you'll accomplish more than you accomplished in the last six months. This is the most incredible method I've ever seen. I learned it some years ago. Just rewrite your goals every morning. The only problem with goals is that we don't set enough of them and we don't set them highly enough. You can have anything you want. Imagine you could have anything that you want, anything that you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis, you can have. Anything that you are crystal clear about wanting and are willing to pay the price to get, you can have. So clarity is the key. Be clear about what you want. Be clear about what you have to do to get it. Be clear about your vision. Be clear, speak, walk, talk, and act with clarity. And that's the final point with regard to clarity. I have seen many men and women who have tripped themselves up by being beaters around the bushers, if you like. They are very 
careful about whatever they say, and by the time they say it, people have gone home for lunch. And one of the keys to success is to be very straight and to be very clear, be very precise. Interesting, one of the reasons why people do not speak to the point is for fear of offending others. Isn't that true? For fear of offending others. Interesting study they did last year. They asked a great number of executives, male and female. They said, if you had to tell a person something unfortunate with regard to their career that was going to affect their lives, and this is something that you've known for a long time, how would you go about breaking the news to them? And each of the person described the strategy they would take. They would set up timing right. They would start off with a talk about uh, talking about subjects that they had in common. They would close the door and keep out the noise. And anyways, they went around and around, and they're all circuitous routes to how they would get to the point. And then they reversed the question. They said, how would you like to be informed of this same subject? And every single one of them said, I'd like to be informed in a straightforward way. I'd like somebody to tell me straight the news. You see, all of us want to be dealt with in a straightforward way because we know we can take whatever it is. But we think that everybody else is too fragile. So what we do is we pussyfoot and tippy-toe around and, and avoid giving them the news and we finally do get the news to them. It sometimes causes more problems than is necessary. So be straightforward, be clear in your language, be clear in your actions. Let people know exactly where you stand and let people know exactly what you've said and what you mean. Very, very important. And it takes practice, by the way. Uh, every single one of these habit patterns, every single one of these qualities has to be learned by practice. And I sat down and looked at this whole concept of excellence and I saw something that I hadn't noticed. It's almost like something brought to the surface of your mind. I noticed that every single man or woman that I had studied who had achieved any kind of success in any field whatsoever had done it after they had made a commitment to becoming excellent in that field. And I began to look and I began to compare and I began to talk to people and I speak to thousands of people virtually every month. I found that I never found a single person who was successful who was not excellent at what they did. That competence, the commitment to becoming excellent in your chosen field is an indispensable prerequisite for success. That if you are not good at what you do, you haven't got a chance in our competitive society unless you win the lottery. That success is predictable if you commit yourself to becoming excellent, it does a whole lot of other things within your mind, but if you commit yourself to becoming excellent, it changes everything about you. And only the top 5 or 10% are excellent. You've heard the rule, the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle, that the top 20% of salespeople make 80% of the sales, that the bottom 80% of salespeople make 20% of the sales. You know, do you know what the difference, the ratio is there? The ratio is the difference between 16 to 1. That the average income of people in the top 20% is 16 times the average income of the people in the bottom 80%. Now, let me ask you a question. Does it mean the people in the top 20% are 16 times better than the people in the bottom 80%? 16 times more experience? Do they work 16 times the number of hours? Do they have 16 times the number of years of education? Are they 16 times more handsome? Are they 16 times anything? But 20% of these people are making 16 times the average of the rest. Prudential Insurance Company did a study some years ago, and they put thousands of agents that they have throughout the United States into their computers and compared their income, and it came out the 80-20 rule worked. 20% of the salespeople were doing 80% of the business. Well, they had all the data on the computer, so they ran it through one more time. They said, what's the average income of the top 20% of the top 20% compared to the bottom 80%? Now, for those mathematicians among you, that works out to the top 4%. What was the average income? They found the top 4% were earning, on average, 32 times the average of the people in the bottom 80%.